Hey everybody, I want to show you a technique that I really like for making ropes in Maya. And this is a technique that was uh, developed by my friend and coworker, Christian Dimitriou. And uh, if you click the link on your screen now, you'll see his website. And if you don't see a link, he doesn't have it up quite yet. But at some point, he's going to have his site up, and uh, you can click on his link to, to find more of his stuff. So anyway, this is a technique that he pioneered. And it works so well that I really don't think there's any any good reason to do it any other way. So let's just get started. Um, I'm going to go to the top view in my Maya scene here, and I'm going to create a CV curve. And I'm just going to draw it out, and this is going to become the curve that the rope is going to follow. It could be anything, um, any shape you want, really. I'm just going to make mine pretty simple. I'm going to grab this and uh, just give it. A little bit of a unique shape here. Okay, just something like that. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that curve and I'm going to rebuild it. So I'm going to go to Edit Curves and Rebuild. And uh, I already have my options set to rebuild with 30 CVs. So it could be any number, but just create enough so that you have a, a pretty good um, distribution of, of CVs to define your shape. You don't want to have this be too low res. Okay, so first thing we're going to do, or well rather second thing we're going to do, is create a circle. NURBS circle. And I'm going to take that and constrain it to the beginning of the curve that I want to use as my rope path. And uh, I'm going to extrude this in a second, but the first thing I'm going to do is actually come into the circle and move over to the channels, and I'm going to change the sections from 8 to 6. So presently, there are 8 CVs that are making up this circle, but I don't want to have that many, and you'll see why in a minute. I'm going to change it to 6. Okay, and I'm just going to go ahead and grab the circle, then shift select the path, and do an extrude which I've got set to a, a shelf button here, but it's just under uh, Surfaces, Extrude. Okay, so you'll notice that there is an option in history called Rotation. And if you, if you notice, if you look at the spans coming down the length of this, it's actually rotating or twisting. So if you look here, you can see it's barely moving at all. But at the end, it's moving quite a bit, which is creating a twist-type pattern. So I just want to point that out. We're not going to use it quite yet. I just want to make you aware of it. So I'm going to put it back to zero. And one thing to note as you're going through this, make sure you do not delete history at any point on any of the surfaces you create. Because if you do, this is going to break down. OK, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to grab the extruded surface we have, and I'm going to rename it Core. You don't have to do this, but I like to do it when I'm showing people how to use it, just so that you get a, a sense for, um, for what's actually happening. Okay, so I'm going to grab the Core Geometry. I'm going to go to Isoparm, right-click and go to Isoparm, and then I'm going to select every other Isoparm on the surface. Just like that. So I'll have a total of three isoparms selected. Now I'm going to go to Edit Curves again, and I'm going to go to Duplicate Surface Curves. And what that's going to do is it's going to build three new curves for us right where those CVs were, or right where those isoparms were. Okay. So now I'm going to grab the core geometry. I'm just going to turn it off, turn off the visibility, set that to off. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create another circle. Oops. Another nerve circle. And this time I'm going to go into the, the channel box and set the sections down to 4. The reason we do that is because that's the minimum number of CVs we need to actually describe a circle shape. And we want it to be as few as possible because when we finish this rope it's going to be very heavy in terms of its geometry. Okay, so once I've done that, I'm going to take that new circle, or at, rather, first I'm going to grab that initial curve that we had, and I'm going to turn it off, because we don't really need it 
right now. We don't need to see it at least. And then I'll do the same thing to that original circle. Okay, so it's very clear what's going on now. I'm going to grab the circle and I'm going to hold down the, the C button on my keyboard and then middle mouse click on the curve so I can snap to the end. I'm just going to scale it down just a little bit. And now I'm going to do the same thing, or rather I'm going to duplicate the circle and snap it to the other two. Okay, so we've got three of these. Now you can probably see where I'm going with this. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to create three new extrusions. One for each uh, what will become strands of the rope. Okay, so they're kind of far apart right now. Let's just grab these and scale them up a little bit so they're they're not just floating independent of each other. Something like that. Okay, so now we have a rope, but we have no coils. Uh, how do we fix that? Well, as you recall, we've got that initial core geometry that we had created, and it's still linked up with history. There's uh, all kinds of uh, data relationships happening between all of these surfaces. And so now if I go into the extrude options of that core geometry and play with that rotation that we had before, you can see that this rope is beginning to coil up on itself. So by default, we're limited to a range of 0 to 360 if we just scrub the rotation. But you can actually get in here and manually override it, which I'm going to do now. So let's just play with a random number of like 2,500. That's not quite tight enough, so I'm just going to try 5,000. So that's looking a lot better. I can make it a little bit tighter. Let's try 6,000. Yeah, so that feels pretty good to me. Now, the cool thing is, is that all of this stuff, again, is still connected through history in Maya. So we can get in here, and we can turn our initial path geometry back on. And I can select the CVs from it. And now if I go back to shaded mode, you can see that when I move these around, it's actually pulling the rope around with it. So it's a very cool, dynamic sort of way to work. And uh, you'll notice that if I do something extreme like this, the rope is actually appearing to uncoil a little bit. And it, it kind of is. It's not really uncoiling. But the value that the rotation of the, uh, the core geometry has is the same. It's not changing. So it's going to naturally look tighter if there's less rope, and it's going to look looser if there's more rope. And it's just a matter of going back into that core geometry now that we've made that change. Let's make a slightly more interesting change. Do something kind of extreme if you want, like that. It's just a matter of going back into that core geometry, finding the rotation value, and then manipulating it to be something even greater. Let's try 25,000. Yeah, that may be a little bit too tight. No, it actually looks pretty good, so I'll leave it. Um, so you have that kind of control. You also have the ability to change the width of this overall. So if we turn the initial circle that we created the initial core piece of geometry back on with, you can see it's still hanging out right there. And if I scale this now, it's going to impact the overall uh, curve. So this might be another way to create like a telephone wire or a spring or something like that if you needed to. So it's very cool. And then you also still have the option to change the diameter of those NURB circles. So you can make them as big or as small as you want, depending on your need. So once you have a beautiful rope that you like and looks perfect, what you can then do is you can finally select everything select, uh, rather just select the uh, extruded tubes and you can delete history and once you've done that you can just delete all this other geometry that you had left over and then if you want you can take this and convert it to uh, polygons and so you'll see you get a shape that's kinda like this and if you look at one of these individually you'll see that it's nothing more than a extruded cube shape which is pretty much the bare minimum that you will need to create a, uh, a nice circular shape around the, uh, the strand. So that's pretty much it. Again, um, my friend Christian came up with this whole thing, and uh, he's very generous 
to uh, let me make a video to demonstrate it. Um, and I think it's probably probably the best way to make rope in uh, in Maya, at least. So hope that's handy to you, and uh, hope you can make some cool-looking models with this uh, technique. Thanks.